Good evening, Eugene. How are you? I'm great, Yana. How are you today? Great, great. Well, this is our week 26. It's our third uh, series of what's not in the mainstream news. Are we? I'll turn it over to you, Eugene, to, to start uh, our discussion on what's not in the mainstream. Yeah, I, I, well, I guess the first two items, uh, Jenna, are going to be, uh, they are in the news to different degrees. Uh, the EU Migration Pact mm -hmm. is in the news, as we all know. So we'll just talk about that briefly. I guess we're through the votes now. Um, so this is going to be, this is passed in the Dáil, uh, unfortunately. And we did cover the consequences or potential consequences in last week's video. So it remains to, to be seen now how this actually pans out. So it's kind of a sad day for Ireland. We've given away a level of our autonomy uh, and sovereignty. And, you know, I think a lot of people are concerned about that. And the, one of the disappointments as well was the fact that the uh, the, the applications to the courts um, to have this suspended and the challenges that were made uh, were basically thrown out by the courts. So it's gone ahead, it's passed through the doll, and now it's going to be going to the next level. So yeah, that is very disappointing, but it, it is what it is and we're going to have to live it, with it. It's really um, disappointing that we 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 lost this by six votes. And if you look at, you know, there's yeah. TDs that didn't turn up to vote. And you think about it and think there's TDs that, yeah. you know, if they may be on the way to retirement. And this was their chance to do the right thing and maybe go against their party whip and vote based on the their morality and their independent thinking. So it's really disappointing that we had this vote passed last night and six it, we only lost it by six and Ireland's sovereignty now is is at yeah. risk and it's just we'll we'll share the screen um uh where people can see who voted yes and who voted no and uh we thank the people who who voted no but the people that voted yes you know those names will go down in history as people who who really uh set Ireland down the path of losing sovereignty and uh you know more destruction in this beautiful country yeah, so it is It is really disappointing. And so we've, we'll have references to a number of the uh, Gript articles. Gript have covered this very well. Just to commend and give kudos to Una McGurk, who submitted a uh, a case against this. The the judge uh, pushed it out and wouldn't hear it. But um, hopefully that still has uh, a glimmer of hope there with the Una McGurk's case. She's um, barrister, senior counsel, and Lawyers for Justice Ireland uh, helped on her legal team with this case. So... Uh, let's just hope that that can be heard and perhaps there's a uh, hope that this might be reversed. Yep, yep. So we'll move on to uh, the next one, which again, we covered uh, a couple, two weeks ago, actually, the whole issue of the uh, Assisted Human Reproduction Bill or the surrogacy bill as we've been called, but it, obviously the scope of this is a lot bigger than just surrogacy. So even though that's what we're talking about and we had some of our supporters outside the doll yesterday so well done to them and they were covered on rte actually so again they got some good coverage and it's just unfortunate that uh, this went through as it did and i think particularly upsetting and i i certainly have found this quite upsetting is the notion that the various amendments that were recommended which i would have felt were all justified uh by sharon kyogan and and maybe others uh were all rejected and hence we've yeah. ended up with a effectively a kind of an unlimited, unrestricted form of surrogacy for single men, even single men who had, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, were convicted of sexual offences uh, can now avail of surrogacy services either in Ireland or in other countries. And I just find it very hard to deal with that. I just think this it's, is a really, it's a dark day for Ireland when yeah, we permit something it, like that. It absolutely <laughs> it shows that the, I mean, out of all the senators, only Senator Ronan Mullen and Senator Sharon Keoghan voted against yeah. this. And how any senator in this country could actually think that it's okay to, um, you know, to sell a baby to the next highest bidder and to um, allow single men and sex offenders to purchase a baby. It's just, it's beyond belief. It's it's just absolutely shows that the gutter that we are being led down to in this country. It's just it's it's absolutely shocking. Yeah, yeah, it is, and I think we can all sympathise with the, you know the exception cases and where people, perhaps within a family situation, uh, look to have a surrogacy where you know a member of the family might actually look to help out. And I think we'd all be absolutely fine with accommodating that. But this is not what we're talking about here. This is a commercialized uh, regime 
uh, where essentially women are going to be exploited for nine months to carry a child and then have, give that child up. And it's it's just horrendous. And then, and then not having any sort of restrictions into who, into who that child goes to. Not at all. It's um, putting a price on life. It's, you know, making babies a commodity, babies a business trade. And, you know, we all know situations where, and I know someone myself who had a medical emergency giving birth to her first child and she uh, began hemorrhaging and, and nearly died and needed blood transfusions all the way to the hospital. And in the hospital, they had to remove her womb as an emergency, but they were able to salvage and save some of her eggs. And between her eggs and her husband's sperm, they did have someone carry the baby and they had two more children who were raised in their loving home. Mm. That is different, completely different than this kind of black market baby selling, which will be what, yeah. what it ends up being. We're selling babies to single men men who might be sex offenders or women who might be sex offenders and selling babies and purposely, purposely having babies just to be sold, uh, not to a loving family, not to someone who had a medical situation. This is completely different. And we just can see how dark this path will go and how rapid it will go, you know, crossing all over any possible boundary. And it's just, it's horrifying to think of. And as a mother who carried two children, and I know that the bond starts from when that baby is conceived and you feel those first flutters and you rub your tummy and you play music and the baby responds to your voice and thinking just to sell those babies off. And, you know, where, where is the boundary with that? There won't be any boundaries. You can just see where it's going. It's, it's sick. It's sickening. So the next one um, I want to talk about, I guess, is uh, why all the rainbows? Um, it is Pride Month. We're recording this. It's still Pride Month. And people wonder why they see all these rainbow logos or all these companies with rainbow flags hanging out the front door in the reception areas. It just all seems to happen. And, and all the companies are doing it all at the same time. Why is that happening? Well, the reason that's happening is because of a thing called stakeholder capitalism. Um, so if you don't know what stakeholder capitalism is about, uh, because we're all familiar with traditional capitalism, you know, shareholders, they control the company. Uh, this, this thing called stakeholder capitalism kind of changes the mix and it, it has, uh, you know, says that there's multiple different stakeholders in a company. There's the employees, there's the people that the customers of the company, there's the, the broader community, uh, the environment. And so stakeholder capitalism att attempts to put measures on those. And the way it does that, it has this thing called an ESG uh, index and score. And it puts that score against every company. And that your score will determine how you can raise capital, how you can get credit, uh, and whether people will actually deal with you at all. Uh, if, you, if you don't have a good score, they may not even take your product or your services. And there's an element of the stakeholder capitalism ESG score, which is called the Corporate Equality Index, uh, which is part of the social aspect of the score. And we're going to dig into that now in a little bit detail. Before we go there, but this whole notion of stakeholder capitalism has been driven by the WEF, United Nations, uh, and by the, the, the serious, the major financial houses of the world. Um, so that's, and, and, and hence, it's, it's there, it's happening. It's been happening for the last number of years. And so people, it's not a conspiracy theory. Some people say, oh, this stuff is a conspiracy theory. It isn't, it's very real. And we're going to bring you through how the Corporate Equality Index uh, comes about and how it's scored and the significance of that. So let's and move on to Eugene, to this. just for any, so, any, lis any listeners hmm. who may not have heard our discussions before and may not know who the World Economic Forum is, uh, you can look it up yourself. Uh, don't trust us. Uh, the World Economic Forum is made up of the 1,000 of the world's top companies, the richest companies. They don't deal with yeah. millions, billions. They deal with trillions. These are the, the top 1,000 uh, in the entire world. These are the companies who fly their private jets over to Davos and talk about how people like us are going to um, live in 15 minute cities and eat bug protein while they're flying private jet jets and eating uh, fillet beef and lobster. So let's go down. So let's take a look at the corporate equality index. So this is run by a, an NGO. Uh, it couldn't be anything else, I suppose, called the Human Rights Campaign, which is an interesting name. Um, so they are the people that they are advocates for LGBT causes. They're an LGBTQ NGO, and they actually run the CEI, the Corporate Equality Index, and they run it through a series of, uh, you know, uh, declarations from companies based on questionnaires 
and they provide a score against that. And we'll get into the criteria now in a few minutes. Um, now, let's just some background in terms of the human rights campaign. Well, they're funded by a group called the Open Society Foundations. And if you probably know, it's Mr. George Soros is the person who funds the Open Society Foundations. So effectively, it's George Soros who's controlling the human rights campaign. And it's George Soros who's controlling the that index, the Corporate Equality Index. So he is actually able to set the agenda for what are the criteria that is used in that index and what companies have to do. So I think you're probably getting the picture now with regard to the, the different logos and the pride flags. So they've got this rating system and methodology that they use, and it evolves over the years. So let's take a look at one of the changes for this year, one of the new criteria. It's driving equality in family formation. Oh, is that a coincidence? What, what we, the bill we've just been talking about uh, in Ireland? Well, you can make that decision yourself as to whether it's a coincidence or not. But look at the criteria associated with the driving equality in family formation. And it talks about human assisted reproduction and surrogacy. Mm -hmm. So we can kind of see, I think, a, a commonality here. And this is only one of many areas where we're going to see those kind of linkages. And as I said, we'll do that discussion next week on all the specific linkages to what's happening in Ireland. But here is one of them. We've mm -hmm. just voted this in in Ireland. And this is one of the new criteria for the human rights campaign to assess corporate agencies uh, in the coming year. So, so if, anyone thinks that, if, at, anyone, yeah. if anyone thinks that the human rights campaign in Ireland is a grassroots bottom up campaign, it's not. It's top down and it's happening in so many countries around the West, uh, driven by people like George Soros. So this isn't a grassroots, kind, inclusive campaign. It's corporate driven stakeholder capitalism top down from people who make money off this. Yeah, exactly. And it's a control. This is a control mechanism for companies. And it's essentially a control mechanism for our society. That's what all of these indexes are. It's your social credit score for how woke you are. Yeah, it is. And they do have an index uh, for schools in the US. Now, we have an index similarly here in Ireland, which belong to run. So if anybody's familiar with the belong to uh, index mark for schools, it's not dissimilar. It's a, it's a, it's looking to achieve the same end. So, um, so here's a, a, one of the lists of, of the, the, all the companies. So they're all scored here and you'll see, um, uh, let's look at Abvi there. We can see Abvi. they're scoring a hundred percent, uh, and they've been doing it for the last couple of years. So no surprise, they're top of the class. Um, and uh, no and surprise for, obviously... for any, anybody who doesn't know who Abvi is, our Minister for Justice, Helen McEntee, who wants to silence us for speaking about things like this. Her husband is one of the senior directors at Abvi. And what product do Abvi make? They make puberty blockers. So Abvi is scoring really well on their little social credit uh woke system and minister for justice is her husband works there so that's a purely a coincidence i'm sure yep so all this data came from the human rights campaign website and we'll have a link in the description so i'm just putting up the screenshots of their web pages so this is what it is uh, now let's take a look at the um actually the metrics themselves and again these are covered on the website it tells you what the different criteria are that you get scored against there's a huge emphasis on LGBTQ training within your company and education in terms of best practices, uh, you know, training everybody on gender identity, sexual orientation, uh, and having policies that are favorable and, uh, you know, inclusive across your company. So you, you really have to get in line with this. And they also insist in having a, a group within your company that kind of manages this, a diversity council, for example, that becomes the, the you know, the policing of this within your company and your, and your organization. So we've seen that before. This is a DEI type mm -hmm. uh, endeavor that's going on here. And other things they insist on is having outreach with the LGBT community. Uh, so, you know, from a recruitment perspective, for example, 
uh, you know, having diversity of suppliers so that you look at some of your suppliers might be LGBTQ, for example. Uh, you're in your advertising and promotion that you'd include, you know, the, the pride flag and, and various mm -hmm. LGBTQ positive uh, elements so that if you're doing an ad on television, for example, you'd have diverse people in the ad. And then philanthropic support. So you are required as part of this to provide a support to at least one LGBTQ organization or event like a pride parade, for example. Uh, and then you must, uh, you know, in general, have a very visible support for the LGBTQ community. That's, again, a part of the criteria, which is why you see the flags, which is why you see the logos, etc. Um, and then there's another two more interesting things. One is that your suppliers also need to be measured to the same standards. So if you've got suppliers who aren't LGBTQ friendly, you shouldn't be dealing with them. So it's a way of freezing out people who aren't in line. And similarly, then there's, if you do anything yourself that's out of line, you get deducted 25 points. It's 25% of your score if you do any blemish against the LGBT community. So and I think does that a point, you can see does what's a point happening here. Uh, does a point reduction mean less money? Is it all about the, the blackmailing saying if you get less points, you get less money? Well, it mightn't necessarily, but it'll mean you'll fall further down the league table against your competitors. And it, and if it became a case where somebody was going to measure, you know, they were looking at you to supply a service and one of your competitors had a better score than you were, well, they'll get the deal. So you better stay right so on the woke trail Ultimately, or you, you won't get the business. You won't get the money if you don't stay on that woke trail. You won't trail. get the business. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, if, and if your score, if you like... One of the questions is, what, well, what if you didn't even participate in this and you say, I, I don't want to be involved in this thing. This is blackmail. Well, mm -hmm. that'll go against you as well. So they, they will hold it against you if you don't have a score, if you're not participating, you're not playing the game. Well, you might be out as well in terms of getting credit, uh, being able to get a loan or being able to do business with various companies that are bought into this. What else do the human rights campaign do? Well, they've got their welcoming schools program. So they're into comprehensive sexuality education and the indoctrination of children in schools with comprehensive sexuality education. So check it out on the website, Welcoming Schools. You can find out all about it. And uh, okay, so that's a human rights campaign. And that's the reason there's pride flags and pride logos. So the next one we want to talk about is the Arcos Foundation. So these are another LGBTQ NGO. Uh, and they're, they're actually run by a guy called John Stryker. So John Stryker is retired from Stryker Medical. He's worth over $4 billion. And so he's the head honcho in the Arcus Foundation. Uh, now they sponsor uh, LGBTQ and social justice causes. Uh, one of those causes is the Great Apes, which is kind of a strange one, but it's one of the things they fund. But the other thing they fund is obviously LGBTQ activities around the world. So uh, we're linked to the website. Uh, they're very open in terms of who they fund. And you'll see this article here where they're actually funding a chair. It's the first queer studies chair uh, in this university. So we've talked about this on other podcasts where we've made assertions that there's these various uh, philanthropic uh, billionaires and their foundations are funding universities to engage in woke scholarship. And this is an example of it. And there's plenty of other examples of it. Uh, so here pushing queer studies in this university. And again, you'll find loads of these. This is not the only one. This is just an example to show you. So this is one of the things the Arcus Foundation engage in. Now, in general, for their grant making, they have a caveat. And they will only fund organizations that are in line uh, with their belief systems and ideologies. So you will not get funding if you're not bought into uh, the agenda, so to speak. If you're not bought into trans ideology, um, you know, the whole notion of social justice, uh, the new modern version of social justice, uh, if, if I use that term, you will not get a grant. Uh, so this is a way of driving this stuff into the culture driving it into the smaller grassroots organizations who are getting these grants. So a lot of like charities and very genuine organizations are forced to take on this ideology because if they don't do it, they won't get the funding. So let's move on. So you can do a search on the Arcus Foundation website as to who they're funding. So it's kind of interesting when you look at some of the people they're funding. Now at the bottom there, you can see Stonewall in the UK. No surprise that they're getting money and they're probably getting lots more than what's here. Uh, but there's a few other ones here, like the Global Network of Rainbow Catholics. 
and New Ways Ministry are both getting funding from Arcus. Now, remember, to get that funding, they have to buy into the ideologies. So they wouldn't get the funding otherwise. So we've got more here from New Ways Ministry. They're getting multiple funds, you can see, over the years. And this other group called Catholics for Choice. So what are they all about? So let's take a look at some of these. So the Global Network of Catholics, of LGBTQ Catholics. So this is kind of creating this pseudo organization, LGBTQ Catholics, as if this was something that existed globally. This is something driven by the Arcus Foundation and funded by them. Um, and they've got an affiliation in Ireland and they've got a website in Ireland. So again, all of these groups, which are kind of pseudo Catholic uh, groups, have to buy into the doctrine coming from the Arcus Foundation. So, so Eugene, these no, um, these, no, no. these groups aren't really linked to the Catholic Church. They're just using the, no the name link to Catholic, the church, yeah. no yeah, link to the yeah. church at all. It's like a, it's a it's a fraud Catholic group pretending to be all about the the woke ideology and promoting that with trying to recruit Catholics into that that uh, that group. Yeah, it is. And actually, you can see this thing, Catholics for Choice here, which is pro-abortion. And they're basically claiming, they're giving out misinformation here that most Catholics now agree with abortion. That's kind of the message. And these guys, these groups were very active prior to the to the referendum here. And it's not just the Arcus Foundation that were involved in funding stuff. It was obviously George Soros and his people were doing funding as well into that campaign. Now, there's one of the groups, which is New Ways Ministry. And this is a concerning thing because some of the people in new, new age ministry have had engagement with pope francis very controversially and again new ways ministry are just another one of these groups funded by the arcus foundation that bought into all the ideology as well uh, but they have had linkages with pope francis and which has been very concerning for catholics um so again you can see where they're coming from so that's 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 the arcus foundation and that's this whole LGBTQ Catholic thing, and you can see where it's kind of coming from. So let's get on to our videos. So we're going to start with a video which we're going to ask people to take a look at because next week we're going to follow on from what's covered in this video. And it talks about stakeholder communism. So we just talked about stakeholder capitalism earlier on, about that ESG score and all of that. This is the evolution of that. Uh, at a kind of a global level. That's what uh, this guy Richard Jeffs talks about. Richard Jeffs is a former documentary maker who used to work with the BBC, did a lot of very good documentaries there. He set up his own company and now he's done, focused on this whole area of stakeholder capitalism and what he's now calling stakeholder communism and that it's happening now. And again, conspiracy theory, oh, this stuff isn't happening. It's not real. It's happening. We can see it in Ireland. The two things that were passed in Ireland this week are part of the plan. We'll go through it in detail next week to show you why they're part of the plan. And it is happening. And it's these these people, if they if it's allowed to happen, they're, they're trying to do this at a global level. And this video gives you a first taster as to what they're trying to achieve. The whole notion of uh, credits, social credits, the whole notion of you know electronic cash so they can control you. Uh, the whole thing we talked about the WF and food in a, in a video a couple of while back. So again, that's all coming directly from their website. So this is a very disturbing video, but it does tie together what's happening. It ties together the indoctrination in schools as well, because the children in schools have to be indoctrinated. They have to be bought into this thing if this is to come to fruition by 2030. So the next one we have is uh, the Brendan option. This is actually a quite a nice, uh, if, uh, for Catholics, I guess, uh, um, for the Brendan Kilcoyne, very frank, um, outspoken uh, Catholic priest. And uh, he's quite enjoyable. His talks are usually like 10, 10, 12 minutes long on various things every week. And he's covered Pride Month, of course, and particularly the Pride flag. So it's well worth a listen. Uh, as I said, he's not afraid to speak his mind. He's not afraid to say things out straight. And he does that in this video. And I think given it's Pride Month, uh, we put it as one of our videos for the week. Well worth a watch. And, you know, it's actually an interesting channel as well, uh, if you want to tune into that on an ongoing basis. So so with the next one we have uh, is a year old. So this is one of our two, this is our two old videos for this week. Uh, it's a documentary, a two-hour documentary called Affirmation Generation. It was also called No Way Back. That was a previous uh, name that was given to it. And it's about the whole transgender 
um, you know, scenario, which it goes with deals with five transitioners, detransitioners, lots of medical experts talking about it. Um, and this is a really good documentary. And the last one is a video again from last year, the transgender empire, how the trans movement com conquered American life. It's not just conquered American life, it's conquered Irish life as well. Um, a guy called Chris Rufo has done this. People may be aware of Chris Rufo. He's one of the most hated people by the left in the US. Which I think is a badge of honor, and I think he I, I think I like that. him already. <laughs> <laughs> it talks about the origin of transgenderism in queer theory. It goes right back to uh, Judith Butler, Gail Rubin, people we've spoken about before, Susan Stryker, who's a trans woman, and um, uh, and it goes through, you know, how that's evolved and how it's become a kind of a pipeline, a medicalization pipeline, uh, tied into the ideology. So websites of the week, um, again, on the theme of pride, we've got this amaze.org uh, website. We've talked about this probably in other videos. Um, this is uh, financed by Advocates for Youth, again, who we've spoken to before, who are LGBTQ uh, NGO in the US, and they're funded by the Grove Foundation. And the Grove Foundation is another one of these philanthropic foundations of the US that funds this stuff. They have hundreds of videos uh, on gender ideology, trans ideology, gender identity, being an ally, uh, being gay, everything. They they churn them out. As you can see, they're kind of cartoon type videos. And the Irish HSC and the Department of Education actually refer to these videos in the curriculum and in their supporting materials. And the last one we have is actually linked to that video regarding uh, stakeholder communism. It's the website that they have. And the reason they have a website is because they feel that their videos will probably be get taken off YouTube. So they've produced a website. It's got a lot of extra videos and a lot of other material on this topic. So again, if you were saying, oh, it's not happening, it's not real, it's a conspiracy theory, start taking a look through this website and some of the material. And as I said, we'll do the correlation for you with what's happening in Ireland. And whether you believe it's a conspiracy theory or not, what we'll show you is that everything that's happening here is directly applicable uh, to this campaign that's been outlined uh, by the videos, by that video on uh, uh, stakeholder communism. We can literally take the boxes as to what's happening here related to that. And this book talks about specifically the aspect of, of queering in schools, how queer theory can be adopted and uh, used to abuse children in schools uh, and, and how kids can get caught up in it and ultimately to very ruinous effects, unfortunately. And it goes through it in detail. Very good book. Uh, Logan Lansing is the main author. James Lindsay is a contributor to it. Yeah, so that's it. So that's it. We'll hopefully see you next week and we'll do stage two of some of the discussion we started tonight. Absolutely. That's great. Thanks, Eugene. Have a great night.